What's going on trade pros? This is Mark from Trade Pro Academy and welcome back to another weekend video. We've got an exciting topic planned for you today. I'm gonna to be talking about the footprint chart, more so how to use a footprint chart in order to refine your trading entries. And I'm gonna give you guys an example of a trade that I took using the footprint in order to qualify the trade. And then I'm also gonna use the replay feature in order to kind of walk you guys through the trade as if you were sat there right beside me. Now, before we get into that, just wanted to get one thing out of the way. You might notice a change in scenery. And the reason for that is because we are currently in a lockdown here in Toronto, Ontario. So all the trade pro staff is working from home now. I do apologize for the quality of the video here, but nonetheless, uh, you know, as traders, what we do is adapt and that's exactly what we've got to do in order to bring this video to you guys today. So grab a pen, a paper, a cup of coffee or a preferred beverage. Let's get at it. So what you guys see in front of you now is my Sierra chart platform and this is basically my daily setup on the left hand side here This is the 10 tick range bar chart just below it is my 5 tick range bar chart and the most important one This is what the video is all about. This is our footprint chart If you're looking at this chart for the first time if you're seeing this for the first time and you're wondering what the heck do all those numbers represent what do all those colors represent? What does all this stuff mean? Well, you're in luck because we filmed a intro to the footprint chart video about a year ago. That link is going to be showing up right up top. Now, if you're not familiar with this chart and what it means, I'd highly suggest you check that one out before continuing on with this video. If however, you're already somewhat experienced with the footprint, you've got an idea of what it represents. Perfect. You can continue on with this video. All right, trade pro. So now that we got that out of the way, let me just enable the order fills on the chart to kind of show you the trade in question. And that trade came in at around 230, 240 or so. And all I was looking for was a break and retest of our prior support level for a continuation rundown. Now it didn't quite get past the prior lows, but we got paid just in front of that. And I think it's a, it's a great example to use to show you guys how I was able to use the footprint chart in order to qualify this trade. Now, just to be completely transparent with you, that wasn't my only trade of the session, but it was the one I was most proud of. I took four today. You know, one of them was stopped out. The other one I scratched. The third one, that's really the heartbreaker. It took me out for one and a quarter point of profit, uh, whereas you guys can see it should have been several points of profit. Uh, and finally, the one we're going to be discussing is this final trade down here. So from a market structure perspective, what was I seeing? Well, I was seeing the fact that the S&P here kind of topped out around these 76s, 77s. And then we sold off into the 64s. That level held a support for three times, three bounces, until it eventually flushed through. And you guys know our strategy, it's no surprise. We like for the simple break and retest, right? One, two, three times a support, broken through. Now it should retest that level. That level should turn from support into resistance, which is exactly what we are looking for it to do. All right, so that's kind of a market structure breakdown uh, as to what we're looking for. Let me jump on the footprint chart now and show you exactly what I saw in order to qualify this trade. All right, guys, so here's the footprint chart of the trade that we're referring to. And what you will note is that the fill came on this rotation here. Now, what got me to take that trade at that level. First and foremost, what I saw was that sellers were coming in to defend the level I was interested in. First and foremost, what we like to see is that on a break and retest, we want to see that there's actually sellers at the level we're considering shorting. What did we see here? Well, we saw just that we saw sellers come in and force a rotation lower with some more sell imbalances. 
All right, now this isn't just a reason to get short. You kind of want to build context here. All right, and so what I like to look for as it relates to trap traders is I like to look for this kind of a pattern to establish itself. I like to see that after we pull off those highs, we retest those highs and the buyers in this case are unable to push the market above those prior tops. What does that look like? Well, you can see here we had a nice sell imbalance. This is aggressive selling. The market pressed lower. We had several rotations, okay? Several rotations and on this next rotation, on this rotation right here, you can see the market poked its head above the prior top. There is a buy and balance that shows up here. There were several buy and balances up top that were erased, which you can't see in this example, but you'll see during the replay. And yet what happens on the next rotation? Well, on the next rotation, the market actually moves lower into the lower end of the range. This is kind of when you start licking your chops, all right? Because now the buyers attempted to push it above the prior selling level and they kind of failed. So the final thing that I like to see is this kind of rotation here. On the next attempt to retest that level, what do you see? You see a stack, rather you see a big amount of selling, 415 contracts sold at that level. If you look one level to the top of that, all right, so this footprint chart is based on the diagonal reading. So what this tells me right here is that 415 contracts sold at the market at 64 quarter and there were only nine buyers at the 64 half. That's why you see that red level. That's because you've got aggressive selling happening there. Once I saw that, I set out, all right, set out some multiple limits here and only got filled on one in this example. But nonetheless, we got that rotation up into that level all right, the market kind of went one tick against us and then eventually came down to take my profit for two and a half points. All right, and so this is what I mean when I was referring to using the footprint to really refine your entries because as you can see, once we get this developing, all right, this is what allows us to put on a trade with a six tick stop and uh, you know a 10 tick initial take profit because we're able to identify these strong levels of market buying or market selling, knowing that if the market pushes up above this level, we're likely wrong and the market is going to continue higher. But so long as that level remains in play, the market remains below it, that is where you should be trying to get in. I liken it to getting in as close to where you're wrong as possible. So now that you guys got this example from the footprint chart, let me run a quick market replay to show you what this looked like in real time. All right, trade pros. So we are about to run the market replay feature here. I'm going to be running this thing at three times the speed. Nonetheless, you guys are still going to be able to see the real power of using the footprint chart uh, when you're looking to qualify an entry. The main caveat here being that like real estate, the footprint is all about location, location, location. If you use this in isolation, it's very easy to get chopped up and get frustrated with the results. However, when you've identified strong levels of support and resistance utilizing your higher time frames, then watching the footprint as the market trades into these levels becomes a powerful tool as you guys are about to see. Let's get this thing started. Okay, so at this point, what you're starting to see is the market's trading into our level and you're seeing that there's buy imbalances showing up. We just saw a sell imbalance erased. All right, so what we wanna wait for is for this candle to close. All right, we wanna see a nice 10 tick rejection candle at our level all right and until that happens we're not really concerned with what's happening on the footprint here until it actually trades our zone so let's keep a close eye on it now the first thing to kind of take 
into account here is the fact that the market isn't just blasting right through the zone right that's really the first thing to keep an eye on you can see it's starting to press into and through the zone but it's not just shooting right through which is the first sign that we might be getting some selling coming in now let me pause the replay here because what we've just seen on the 10 tick is the market traded into our level gave us a nice rejection and if you look down here there was some pretty decent volume on that rejection all right now looking at the footprint we can see that sellers came through at the the level here all right they forced a rotation lower but at the same time you still got some buying demand holding on here so what we're looking for is for the market now that we've established somewhat of a range here for the market to kind of bounce in around this range make an attempt to the upside fail to get through and then we'll look to to get in on a retest of some sell imbalances for the flush lower so let's show you guys what this thing looks like again it is five times the speed but nonetheless the lesson should remain all right, so we're seeing sellers trying to press this market through. However, buyers are kind of holding it where you'd anticipate buyers to come. This is where the sellers really stepped in. This is the level that we really keep a focus on as the market kind of rotates through to see if the sellers, or rather to see if the buyers fail to break through the top side of this resistance. So you can see they're trying it now, trying it now. And the fact that it's struggling here, it means that there's a fight. All right, and so the level where you started seeing that aggressive selling, those sellers are, are fighting with the buyers here. And now we're, we're just getting more rotations. Now, the fact that there is no real imbalances at the moment shows that it, there's somewhat of an equilibrium happening right now. So what we need to see is for one side to get more aggressive than the other. And now, all right, I'm going to pause the replay there because what I want you to take a note of is there is a buy and balance appearing near the top of this rotation so this is kind of what you want to keep an eye on here look at how this buy and balance reacts does the buy and balance stay on are these buyers able to press this market through and above this level and are they able to do it with conviction because if not guess what we are likely in a level where we've got some trapped longs so again, what did we just get here on this rotation? You guys saw, you know, several buying balances forming. Those were erased. We did have one show up here that remained on the footprint, which means that at this point in time, all right, we've got 156 market buy orders along around these 63 halves. All right, so 156 market buyers that enter the market aggressively are now committed to this long trade so the longer that this market stays at or below this level the likelier they are to be stuck and the likelier they are to have their sell stops to get out of their trades below these you know these prior little rotation levels all right and so that's effectively what we're looking for so keep an eye on how this current rotation finishes forming so there was a sell imbalance that kind of got erased a buy imbalance that got erased there's an obvious fight going on here right to our point still a bit early right still a bit early the buyers can still come through and press this thing back above that level we need to see a clear rejection of that happening so more buy imbalance still showing up here but the idea remains the same all right we had that initial selling got some rotations we got rotations the buyers attempted to push it through here you can see the sellers are really trying to get this thing to flush through but at the moment in time the buyers are still holding this market up all right let me pause this guy again real quick here so on this rotation now what do you see you see another buy and balance so more committed buyers at this level so we have 156 at these 63 halves you have 487 longs at this 62 three quarter level now on this rotation up if this rotation fails we've likely got some stuck longs and the shorts should come in and press this market lower All right so buyers coming through trying to press this market above you saw and here's here's that level all right this thing happens quick once you see that rotation you've got to be quick to throw on those limits 
Granted, I've got the replay feature here so I can pause this in real time, but this is kind of what the entry would look like. Now the fact that we've had buyers step in once, stepped in twice, they tried to get it back above these highs and what happened? A big sell imbalance with the volume node right there. That is your sign that you've likely got some trapped longs. At this point, we set those limits out with the idea that below this level right now, the longs are gonna be stuck, all right? The longs are gonna be stuck and we are going to flush their sell stops. So again, let's throw those limits out there and see what happens, all right? So you see a lot of buying imbalances coming through, but it can't go up. More buying imbalances coming through, but this market just can't go up, all right? This next attempt here, that's your chance for the buyers to take it through. They don't quite get it and now you've got the selling coming in so let's get rid of that and you can see that these buyers are really defending that level they're really trying to get this thing going but there's the first one taken out for profit the retest of this level which holds in this case and then what you really need to see again is a continued push from the sellers to get this market back below that prior day close. And now we obviously know what happens here, but that is a general example of what you want to look for uh, on the footprint chart in order to refine those entries. All right, Trade Pro, so that's a wrap on today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you found value from this, Please, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check off that notification bell, and to smash that like button. Also, in the comments, let me know if you guys are enjoying this kind of format here where we use a market replay feature to show you guys what the auction looks like in real time and how you can use order flow to take advantage of that. Until next time, good luck and good trading. Take care, guys. Hello, and thank you for watching this video. I want to take a moment to invite you to an exclusive online trading masterclass. In this event, you're going to learn three key things to help take your trading to the next level. Number one, we're going to teach you a complete price action strategy used by professional traders on a daily basis, plus give you the checklist so you know how to check off each step to qualify the opportunities. Number two, we're going to teach you how to use advanced order flow analytics to help you qualify high probability, low risk trade setups on a daily basis. Plus, we're gonna teach you how to use that order flow to disqualify the trades that you're used to taking that end up being stopped out. Number three, we're gonna show you how you can apply all of this information with a small account because you could start small and scale up. In fact, that's the only way to start and a lot of our traders are doing it in our community on a daily basis. This is an exclusive offer you can get online only at this event. I look forward to seeing you at this masterclass and teaching you these three secrets of highly profitable day trading. Take care and have a great day.